is January the 8th, 2021. If you are looking at this video, congratulations, you have made it. I am thankful that you are here. It has been 2020 was a very, very crazy year in itself. Um, so much has went on dealing with ports, ports politics, pandemic, um, racial inequality. It's a lot that happened. And for a lot of people, it was a horrible year. For some people, it was just a bad year. And in the midst of all the darkness that happened in 2020, there was some good that happened in 2020 as well. And whatever you went through in last year, I pray that um, if it was anything bad, that you um, can find the strength and hopefully your friends can help you find the strength in order to take the next steps in order to become better. For everybody that made it, had a great year, regardless of what was going on, I pray that that continued success happens in the year of 2021. And I pray that it comes in abundance for everybody that is here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the first Art Meets Life of 2021. I am LJ Bowens, spoken word artist, author, and I do a lot of stuff, but I feel like today, this particular event is a great event to have fun with a lot of authors and to have fun with you, the audience, because yeah, even in kicking off this year, yeah, it was some crazy stuff that happened this year. I don't think I need to go into the whole um, thing that happened in Capitol Hill. Um, they've been talking about it enough, but I do feel that it is a blessing for us to be here. And I'm very thankful for everybody that's tuning in. I'm very thankful for everybody that is going to be, that's actually a part of this event that we're going to get ready to get into shortly. So you guys are tuned in. And you see that we're doing something special tonight. So I want to give you all a little history about this particular event and why we're doing it. So Author Spotlight actually started some years ago. And it was an idea that came together from me, an uh, artist by the name of Law Bullock, and an artist by the name of Ed Spearwolf Owens. And we were blessed with the opportunity to put together an event where we all had books that came out around the same time. And what we did was we pretty much put together an event where we talked about our books we showcased our books, asked, qu answer questions um, from the people that asked about them, and it was able to do something different as far as putting a spotlight on authors in that particular frame. What then ended up happening is when um, we first started our Art Meets Life event, we ended up taking one of our days for Art Meets Life, and we did this again. But this time we had about, I want to say, 10 authors that showed up, and we created kind of an a a small little mini uh, book festival for authors in our area. And it was a great event because we had so many authors came in, whether they were poets, children's authors, children authors, um, novelists, uh, motivational speakers that did put together books, um, basically with devotionals. So, and it was, it was a beautiful thing. So this has been in the making for some time because we wanted to do this last year, but we couldn't work it out the way we wanted to because of pandemic. So the fact that we're able to do this in this platform makes it a lot more special for me. And I'm thankful for everybody that's tuned in. And I'm thankful for everyone that is basically going to give you some excerpts from some of their books. So the authors that we have on here today are some authors that have wrote some phenomenal books. And some of these authors have just released new projects toward the tail end of last year. But like many of us, we couldn't do a lot of what we normally do as far as the promotion of our books. I mean, social media is definitely always a blessing when you promote it, but a lot of us like to put our feet to the ground and we like to go to our shows. We like to go to our um, book conferences. Some of us even go to cons and we sell our books there. So I wanted to do this in order to use this platform to showcase some of the dopest authors I know personally and let y'all get an open ear to what's going on in their world and give y'all a chance if y'all like what y'all hear buy a book from them during this time. Or, you know, if you like everybody, buy a book from everybody. I mean, some of y'all got deep pockets. So, you know, why not show that love to these wonderful authors? So before I get this started, I do want to share one thing real quick. Two of our authors could not make it tonight. Um, one dealing with a family emergency, the other because they were under the weather. And one of them goes by the name of Ebony Payne English. And the other goes by the name of Valawan Blackman. So Ebony Payne English, has phenomenal books out, but one of the books she was going to promote tonight was called, and I'm going to probably mispronounce this, and I apologize, The Secret of Mott. <laughs> if I mispronounce it, I apologize. And 
Val Blackman is a motivational speaker, and she has a book known as Fight for Your Life, The Journey. And both of those books are available. So if you want to know more about these books, by all means, please check these books out. You can go to Amazon.com and you can purchase those books. The Secret of Mott by Emily Payne English. And you can go find Fight for Your Life, The Journey by Valwan Blackman. And both of those books are available at www.amazon.com. So please check those books out. And like I said, it's all about showing the love for all our folks and our family. So without further ado, I'm going to quit talking. Um, I had a book that came out last year, but this ain't about me tonight. Um, we did a show about that. If you want to know about that book, um, go to YouTube and look up Art Meets Life, the 310 edition. It'll tell you more about that book. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quit talking and we're actually going to bring a spotlight on one of our first authors. And one of the first authors, the first author that's actually coming up is one of the authors that actually helped me when we can um, put this idea together for the author spotlight. Um, this brother, y'all know him, y'all love him because y'all seen him up here numerous times. Please put your hands together for the one and only Law Bullock. What is going on, Law Bullock? Oh, nothing, nothing much, my brother, nothing much. <laughs> Just trying to stay good. busy. You look good, man. Happy Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm glad you're doing good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, I'm only gonna have some quick questions for you. I already asked you the first question, making sure you was doing okay. So my second question is going to be, what is the title of the book or books that you are gonna give us excerpts for tonight? Uh, I'm gonna focus on the anatomy of my love poem. Okay, so without you telling me saying too much, cause I know you're gonna explain a little bit about the book in a second. I'm gonna ask you what gave you the idea to come up with the title for that book? I I like strange names. I like names that make you think about it. Like, what is this book about? But what really gave it to me was the journey that it took me to get to that book. And it, it's a journey of a, it's a journey about love. That's, that's pretty much wraps it up. It's a journey about love. All right. I love it. So that's my, uh, that's all the questions I'm asking. Um, as you know, um, all of our authors are going to give you all eight to 10 minutes of an excerpt and tell you all more about the book and why I should purchase it, which y'all should purchase it. And that's all I got, brother. The floor is now yours. Okay, okay. First up to bat. How, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? How's it going? Yes, uh, the book is my second. It's my second release, The Anatomy of My Love Poem. And I'm going to give a small little uh, explanation about it. Uh, let's say years, years prior to me finally writing that book, I had gone through, I say it, a, a journey of where I lost love, where I gave up on, I gave up on love and I gave up on being loved. So it was like, could I ever get back there? And a lot of things happened in my life that added up to me finally finally have the ability again to love and be loved. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> love is a Titan towering above all. And another thing is I broke this book up into three different sections, all using three, I'm a nerd. So I used three walls, three sections and this poem comes from uh, the chapter of Wall Maria, and it's called Odd Vision. I see ghosts. Might as well put it out there because they visit me every single day, often with a problem in need of fixing. Even the dead cannot move on with wounds unattended, yet the reason that I write this is because last night, I caught a glimpse of you. Well, the last few days I have seen your silhouette standing in front of the bedroom window, looking out. And you turn each time to smile my way as tears form each time because I remember, I remember the day that you were taken. Right in front of my very eyes, I am able to see things that are already dead and those that may be on the edge of the abyss did I have the foresight to save you? Even with all the characters that manifest, it only hurts to see you, not as the whole you. You knew 
know everything about my secrets. The sixth sense kid I might as well been. The remnants of those now past appear to me, telling me they're everything of those very wounds unsettled. And I go and find the ones that did them wrong, except I cannot seem to find a resolution for when I see you. I feel my heart break all over again, reliving that day at the mall, the images on repeat. You and I brought a halt to a plan that would have been catastrophic Yet the cost of your time on this plane, even though your life had not been one of daisies and sunshine all the time, you found a genuine love for me and all my oddness that most will never comprehend. And I found love for everything that was of you. You support this odd gift of mine and in ways you still do as my spiritual guide. Or are you only appearing because I just cannot seem to let you move on? And I do admit, the past few days have been almost a dream state, st sitting here with you. And that is when our friends arrived to let me know that which I've known for quite some time. And that it is time for you to move on because you have settled here because of me not letting go. And I need to get them moving myself because there are clouds upon the horizon. And that in itself is humorous. Just because of your preferred nickname. So of tears, I say until we reunite in a better place, I will see you again. That poem is called Odd Vision, and that is from the chapter Wall Maria. Ah, yeah, that, that this book took me, I think, the longest for me to write. It took almost a year for me to write that book. I, I literally... I literally had a journey within my pains, my aches, uh, my smile, my joy. I had to find the balance for this book to be read. I think I went through five different manuscripts before the final outcome was done. I think I'm going to do one more piece from this book. And yes, it is a poetry book. It is a poetry book, but... It's so much more than just that, though. It's just so much more than just that. I hope you are doing great, ladies and gentlemen. This one right here is one I used to perform a lot. It's called Picking Petals, and I'm going to do the first segment of it. As long as it comes up. Yeah, but... Okay. It's everything. Here we go. Once again, the book is called The Anatomy of My Love Poem, and it is a journey to finding love again. And here's the last exit I'm going to do because I think my time is running. She loves me. She loves me not. Blistered words rolling from off a tongue. She loves me, says that she loves me not. Extravagant knots form as stomach titans. Sounds fancy at first, yet while peeling this flower, fingers begin to bleed. Dripping as each petal drops, each of own personality accompanied with defense systems. Yet once the code is dialed in, the door unlocks to a lack of security. I love me. I love me not. Words of question marks finding life, deep within. Obsession building, pacing back and forth. Affection upon surface fills the game of flower roulette. Even when not in sight, there is a trigger to pull, a chamber just waiting to be cocked. Like these petals being pulled, actions recycled, like syndicated reruns, questions begin to blur as statements. And the thought of love is supposed to be fun, though. No? Or do I mean right? I think she loves me. Perhaps she only loves me not. Why is my heart going back and forth like volleyball? Heartbeat, drumming away in chest excessively. Calm demeanor, beginning to vanish. Blood pressure shows signs of pressing me. Hates me, no wait. I thought it was love me not. Petals wilting before very eyes. Quicker than I can pick them or try to piece them back together again. Humpty Dumpty forever fallen. Lustful red stains, leaving imprints upon my palms, 
Image of her hanging frames upon these mental walls, me smiling at reflection, causing myself confusion, so I must be insane. Feeling the pressure like a full court press, five doubts playing defense against one potential, and I fail to see the openings, going up for the shots, and it is me blocking myself. You see, she loves me. There we go. That poem's actually longer, but time is running. And I hope y'all enjoyed it. That is called the Anatomy of Love poem. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Log. Can you finish that yeah. poem, please? Um, I'm not going to do you like that. Finish that poem. Like, you are not mm -hmm. going to cut that poem short. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm uh, free from the last line. She loves me. No wait. Why do I steady torture this rose? Thorns piercing into hands as they meet mirror, causing shards to shatter. Feet on the entrails from the aftermath. I love me. Sometimes I think I love me not. Over time, these fingers will begin to mend. So too will this heart of mine that sits in, that sits in halves. South succeeded from north leaving doubt that common ground could ever be retrieved. You see, she loves me. Perhaps there is a chance that she does not hate me. Even if the message that I love her is never received, either way, obsession for her must be deleted before there could ever be real, a real conversation because these pieces of broken mirror will say anything to be whole again. The dangers of only lusting for her of lusting for me to love me so I can touch her, so we could possibly be together. Even if that means that Humpty Dumpty's tragedy is our outcome, I love me, even if she doesn't. I love me, even if I do not make it with her, because the fact about potentials is just that, potential. And no matter how heartbroken things never meant to be are not the things I should mourn, because the dust will finally begin to settle exposing that I can fully bloom even after losing some of my petals. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother, for sharing that awesome, 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 awesome poetry. So real quick, um, even though it is up there, and I, and I know you just only did one book, you have uh, more than one book. Can you tell yes, us about yes. the other book real quick and where they can purchase your books at? Yeah, the other book is called Poetry, My Memory. That didn't take as long because I've been doing those poems for a while before I wrote the book. But it was pretty much me trying to get my first book out. It was me trying to see if I could commit to it. And it felt good doing it. And it did help me give the confidence to myself to write the second book and also the, the next book I'm writing. So. Yeah, and you can find them at lulu.com, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, uh, Books a Million. Yeah, <laughs> they're out there. Amazon, Lulu, yeah, both of them. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this quick shout out real quick for Law Book. Um, real quick, yes, that by all means, definitely purchase his books at all the sites he named, but definitely buy it from lulu.com. And the reason I'm telling you to buy it from lulu.com is because I don't know about Amazon, but I know with Lulu.com, he gets more royalties for his book if you buy it from that site. So buy it there. One more time. Give it up a lot. Look, y'all. Thank you so much, brother. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you. All right, y'all. So as you can see, we have these dope authors um, coming up on here and doing thing. So the next author coming up, he is new to the poetry scene, but not new to the movement and what he speaks. This is his first published work, I believe, and is he's also a member of the Detour Slam team. Please put your hands together for the one, the only, Nick Corman. You're muted. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> so how you doing, brother? Brother, I am, I am, I am fantastic, blessed and highly favored, my brother. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. So, 
as I ask everybody, um, just two quick questions, and I'm gonna let you go into giving us, you know, some of your work from your book. Um, what is the title of your book? Uh, the title of my book is "For the Love of." For the love of. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and also, um, what made you come up with the title for that book? Uh, coming up with the title, um, it was really a question of, well, it was really the reality of like trying to figure out what, you know, we as people, not only myself, but, you know, as, uh, um, you know, like my friends, my family and just other people that I would interact with, you know, like what, you know, we're willing to put ourselves through for, you know, like the love of, you know, a myriad of things and, you know, like trying to distinguish, you know, when that love, you know, turns into idolatry and to, you know, other, you know, unhealthy um, and toxic, you know, behaviors and emotions. All right. I like that. So I'm not going to um, say any more because this is your time to talk more about your book and give us a couple of excerpts from your book. So, Mr. Nick Corman, the floor is yours. Cool. So, everyone, how you doing again? My name is Nick Corman. Um, so, yes, uh, like I was just saying to uh, to LJ, um, this book just really encapsulates, you know, what what a lot of us are, you know, willing to do or, you know, put ourselves through for, you know, the love of, you know, a myriad of things. Um, so um, I'm going to read a couple poems um, and a couple, you know, I'm saying like they're relatively short. So I'll, I'll probably get through about three or four in the next, you know, eight minutes or so. So, uh, you know, hope you all enjoy, um, you know, and I hope you all are ready for the uh, roller coaster we're about to take you on. So uh, this first one is called uh, For the Love of Pride, um, Tears for Unique. Um, and this was dedicated in the memory of a, a young black woman. Who was um, who was killed in a domestic violence situation um, in Michigan a couple years ago? <clears throat> your childlike reaction is merely a reflection of your lack of introspection because your because your pride couldn't accept that the object of your affection curved you like a country road and hit you with rejection. Your pride simply couldn't fathom her not matching your enthusiasm because guy code doesn't have coverages for egos and nationwide may be on your side, but they don't provide protection for your pride. She wasn't stunting you and your ego didn't know what to do. When you were, when you were rejected, your pride couldn't stomach that humble pie. Now you're insecurities have been magnified and your anger has intensified your pride wouldn't allow your homies to call you a lame so you called this sister a hundred things and none of and none of them was her name your pride just wouldn't let her leave so you grabbed her by the arm and ripped her sleeve she tried to get away but you didn't really care so you punched her in the face and grabbed her by the hair you threw her to the ground into her pleas you were deaf so it's a damn shame that your fragile pride is what led to her death so that was for the love of pride. Uh, this next one um, is called for the love of tyrants in parentheses rhetoric. Um, I think this one is definitely going to uh, this is a very timely piece, um, especially um, with, you know, everything that that is uh, going on in the past four years and everything that is going on this week. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but the rhetoric of an illegitimate president will make a white supremacist terrorist unload a full clip. Hate spreads through minds like a malignant condition. And although 45 didn't pull the trigger, he provided the ammunition. The divisive comments replayed on television screens and, reprint and reprinted in magazines will inspire a terrorist to go unload a magazine in a shopping mall, a school, a church, or a mosque. And it seems like all hope is lost. And even though his hate speech is free of charge, we're the ones who pay the cost. So, yes, yes, that is uh, for the love of tyrants for the and, you know, rhetoric, because a lot of people are, you know, they're really, uh, really gung ho on this uh, on this orange fellow. But I'm really glad he's uh, on his way out. The eviction notice to the White House. <laughs> so uh, this next one, this next one is called For the Love of My People, in parentheses, sugarcoating. I've been called a racist for exposing instances of racism. I've been told to sugarcoat the trauma of our history, but the pain from our past has already been oversaturated 
with whiteness. So again, that is called for the love of my people, sugarcoating. And you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, as as uh as black people or as you know any marginalized group, you know, we're told to, you know, either get over our past or or to just, you know, uh no 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 don't be so don't be so you know blatant with it. Don't hit them over the head with it. You know, like you don't want to, you know, just scare people up. But I mean, when you think about it, when these people were oppressing our uh, our uh, ancestors, you know, our descendants, when they were when they were, you know, committing all all of these, you know, um, atrocious acts, you know, they weren't sugarcoating their actions. They weren't sugarcoating, you know, the the uh, propaganda and the racist rhetoric that, you know, was being, you know, put in all kinds of news media. So, you know, uh, just moving forward, you know, speak your truth, speak the truth. Um, and, you know, don't sugarcoat uh, for anybody. And this last one, this last one I'm going to read uh, is a little more lighthearted than uh, than the other ones. Um, it's called For the Love of the Gram, you know, uh, the uh, Instagrams, you know, that's what the kids be on nowadays. So, you know, I just try to, you know, stay hip with the kids. <laughs> if I could, I'd exchange this virtual heart for my real one. These girls on the gram be hella fake, so I'm thankful I found myself a real one. You haven't had any vitamin me in your life, so that's left you malnourished. And I want to slide in your DMs, but I'm too cowardly like courage. So I admire you from this screen and show my homies your beauty. Then I scroll down to the picture where you're poking out your booty. Plus, I see you like Disney, and that's perfect because I'm goofy. So if all men are dogs, that's even better because I'm Snoopy. I just hope you don't shoot me down like Lil Saint and you got served because unlike the shape of your body, I'm not trying to get curved. I'm just trying to be the man that you want and the lover you deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope y'all are clapping or snapping or whatever. So I thank you from wherever you are in the world. Um, again, thank you. <laughs> this is for the love of. Um, it is available on Barnes and Noble. Um, I had to make some little alterations to it um, online. So if you go on Barnes and Noble right now, it's not there. If you go on Barnes and Noble on Monday, it'll be there. Um, so, uh, well, Barnes and Noble online online it'll be there um but i do have you know physical copies so um you know if you would like an autographed copy just you know you know what i'm saying hit me up uh on the facebooks um my website will be active uh hopefully by the end of the month fingers crossed so i'll be taking orders to the website as well um but yeah that is uh for the love of yes the artwork is done by my good sister essence foster good uh good friend of mine, supporting black owned businesses, my childhood friend. Yeah. Support your homies. LJ is good at support. Wait, wait, where you at LJ? LJ. I'm right here. <laughs> LJ is good at supporting his homies. <laughs> um, okay. So the reason I'm laughing, right. I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason I'm laughing because I made sure I did so much research to make sure I got everybody's links up there. And when you get up there, you say, yeah, so my book is not there. <laughs> hey, look, it, look, look, it just happened like today, like, like a couple, like maybe, maybe an hour or two ago. And I was like, oh, oh boy. Uh, you good, man. You good. But everybody knows I can buy your book for the love of Monday, starting Monday at Marsland.com. Or since I got your, um, Instagram up there, they can reach up to you at Instagram if they want a physical copy, correct? Yes. Nice, nice. Well, we're good to go. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> so, um, real quick, um, let me put that back up there real quick. So I was trying to get these comments up there because it's been a phenomenal um, thing going on so far. I want to give a special shout out to somebody. So, um, there's somebody that's in the chat by the name of Natty Sunshine, who's tuning in all the way from Berlin, Germany. So I want to definitely thank her for tuning in. If you do not know who Natty Sunshine is, she is a phenomenal supporter of the arts, and she has her own radio show in Berlin, Germany, known as Natty's Corner. Um, I myself is featured on that show. Um, Mr. Desana Hanu, who you will hear from later, uh, what about us in Europe? I, I just 
Okay, I'm sorry. So Natty Sunshine wanted me to bring up the whole country of Europe. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kai just brought up Germany, but I got you. Now I'm talking about the whole country. I got you. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, definitely. Um, definitely want to give a special shout out to her for definitely supporting the arts and definitely doing everything she can to make sure those arts get supported. So speaking of Europe, um, it's it makes it puts me in a mindset of wanting to when all this stuff is lifted and all the restrictions are lifted, uh, I think it would be good for us to travel because I think traveling is one of those things that um, is a great thing to, you know, recharge and, you know, taste that new fresh air of another country. Hopefully, you know, nothing bad happens, but just the fact of traveling is a beautiful thing. Um, I love to travel myself. Um, I definitely got inspired to travel more so, because of our next guest. This next person that's coming in is the author um, of a fantastic book that she's going to tell you about. And she happens to also be my wife. And everybody knows her as a boss lady. Please put your hands together for the one and only Monica Haynes Bowens. Woo! Oh, I don't got to bring you on the screen. You're here. <laughs> I am here. Hey, how you doing? Doing good. How are you? I am doing great. So I'm going to go ahead and play, you know, devil's advocate and go ahead and put this thing up there real quick. So what is the name of your book? The name of my book is the Travel Planning Journal for the Non-Planner and the Planning Enthusiast, Enthusiast 2. Wow. <laughs> Travel Planning Journal for the Non-Planner. So this is really was created initially for those who do not like to plan travel. Okay, so she just um, answered my question. So, <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, but uh, what made you want to come up with that title? The title and the name of that book. The title is very self-explanatory. It was simple. Um, just if you know that you don't love to plan travel, so this book would be a great tool for you to use to help you with that trip that's coming up or that trip that your spouse or your friends or a family member wants to plan, you can use this to kind of help you get all your ideas down for oh, that trip. Nice. Um, I'm excited about it. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, let you talk about, um, I guess, I guess for you, I guess for this being a travel journal, and this is something that, um, especially from the fact of everything you do, I think it's best that we give an example. Okay. So let's 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 talk about this book. So let's let's go through an example of this book. Well, this book I'm playing guinea pig, by the way. I'm guinea pig. <laughs> so in this book, I laid out kind of my process on what I do when I plan trips. I am one who <laughs> suffers from wanderlust. I have this strong urge to travel all the time. It makes me happy. Planning trips makes me happy. Anytime I'm down or stressed, planning an upcoming trip always gives me peace. And I know it may sound weird. So in the book, I broke down the process that I use when I, when I plan my trips. And it covers, I have five areas. They help you identify your why, why you're taking this trip inventory what you want to experience so kind of giving some thought into everything that you want to do and what you want to get out of the trip you're getting ready to take start early with budgeting because budgeting is usually the biggest thing that keeps people from traveling frequently and research and plan of course and then know your resources know think about everything that you're going to have to do to make that trip happen if you have young children that are not able to attend who's going to watch them if you have pets who's going to take care of the pets just kind of knowing what resources you have available to you so that you can go on the trip. So I told LJ that I was going to use him as a guinea pig for my self-care. I am a, ther a therapist. I'm a licensed clinical <clears throat> social worker. So self-care is very important to me. I talk to a lot of my clients about self-care and its importance and its significance in your life. So I want to read a little bit about that. Self-care is simply just that. It is what we do to take care of self. It is that thing that we do to rejuvenate, <clears throat> refresh, and reset on what we can be mentally and physically, and so that we are ready for the next task. We live in a busy society, and we are often running here and there and helping out our family, loved ones, friends, employees, employers, etc. In our day-to-day, -day, we tend to put ourselves last on the list of things to take care of. That being said, we need to make intentional efforts to take care of our mind, body, and soul. Like most things, this can mean and look like different things to different people. 
Some may enjoy physical fitness, others meditation. For some, it's participating in spiritual activities and still others choose going to the spa. However it's done is not what is important. What is important is that we recognize and value the importance of taking care of ourselves. So LJ, when was the last time you made your self-care a priority in your life? Um, ooh, this is bad because this is like literally on the spot. <laughs> so uh, I think the last time I've made self-care a priority for me may have been, hmm, this is a very good question. While he's thinking, there's a spot yeah. in the book right <laughs> now. Right now. Answers <laughs> to um, that question. I think the last time I literally made self care um, something very important to me was not so much going to get into the details, but um, in July, I had something that happened that literally stressed me out to the point of getting angry. So, what I decided to do was, aside from the many phone calls I did at that moment and people talking me down, I still was feeling stressed. But I think what I did was I took the time to like sit in silence, maybe for like about an hour, an hour and a half afterwards, listen to music for a little bit and just try to like empty my mind and not think so much about the thing that's so much stressing me out was making me feel sick at that moment. So I would say just sometime in July of last year was the time I tried to really put self-care first. Okay, so that was almost seven months ago or so? Yeah. Okay, so you don't put self-care as a priority often, it sounds like. I I try to, but it's I guess because I'm always like somebody that works always want to try to find work to do. I don't really like the time to chill. Even when I'm like doing a video game or playing a video game, I'm like, okay, got to go write a poem or something, or got to go try to make things happen. Okay, so it also sounds like you're very busy. So from what you stated, I hear silence and music as that too when I marry my bride. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pamela. <laughs> so um. Quiet, silence, and music seem to be the two things that kind of helped you to calm down and get back to your center. Mm -hmm. So then when you're thinking about quiet and music and you're wanting to plan a trip that's going to help be rejuvenating for you, I would suggest that you look at maybe spas or um, trails, nature, mm -hmm. going somewhere where it's kind of quiet. Um, you're an artist, so listening to the music of the of nature can be inspiring for you as well. And there is an activity in this book where you can actually circle the different things that you enjoy doing. That's here. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Where you can circle different activities that you enjoy doing, just kind of thinking like what LJ was just saying, like, what do I like to do? What calms me down? What brings me joy? What makes me happy? What do I want to experience on this trip? What is the purpose of this trip? Helps you kind of identify what you want to do. There's also a section in here on budgeting. So in thinking about your self-care, mm -hmm. I'll do it I'm too sorry. fast. I know, I was just trying to bring it up. <laughs> thinking about your self-care, um, you have to prioritize, prioritize your self-care. How much money is your self-care worth? How much money is your sanity worth? Yeah. And if you know that you have a very stressful life, if you have a very stressful work life, then you could add in your budget or in your financial planning X amount of dollars, set it aside so that you can do a trip at least once a year so you can get away and regroup and kind of get back to whatever it is that's going to make you feel whole again. The other thing that the kind of the last few things I want to mention about this book is that it gave me an opportunity to share some of my pictures. We travel a lot. And so some of the photos that I've taken on some of our trips, I was able to include it in this book. The one I just showed came from Asheville, North Carolina. Um, what what place was that in Asheville? It was a restaurant that we went to. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> in Built more, built more estates to be exact. Well, it wasn't that bit more. It, it was, was a different restaurant that we went oh, to. Oh, I thought it was a bit more estates. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be quiet because it ain't my book. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another picture that I took. It was at the beach. <laughs> And then the last thing I wanted to kind of point out is this book has a lot of different exercises and activities included where you can literally use it as a journal and write down your thoughts and what you want to experience on your trip and how you want to budget for it, who's going to go, what you want to do, your purpose for going. And because I have so many activities in this book, I created an appendix. So the worksheets that's included in the book Blank copies are also located within the appendix, so you can make extra copies if you need to. Of course, you can always buy another book. But 
There are blank copies if you need to make a copy for another trip that you want to have in the future. All right. So um, the traveling planning, the travel planning journey for the non-planner and the planet enthusiast too. Where would they be able to purchase this book? This book is available on Amazon. All right. Um, well, definitely. Thank you so much for being a part. Um, we have another comment because everybody was kind of making jokes about my intervention. Oh. Um, I would like, I would watch the Monica Tales LJ How to Be Better <laughs> show. Also, the Monica reminds LJ of the past experience while he misremembers detail show. It happens oh. all the time. More do y'all know. Um, maybe yeah. one day we would bless y'all with some type of conversation show between husband and wife. LJ's phenomenal. Yeah. I do good. I do good. Thank you. Monica Haynes, Bones, everybody. The travel planning journey. Make sure y'all check it out. Journal. Journal. Jeez, whatever. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Mispronouncing everything. Having the people, having the people here, I got their books, and I'm probably just gonna end up butchering their books too. So, but that lets you know how much I appreciate all of the people that are actually part of this. Um, because they're dear friends, they're definitely great authors, great artists, and overall great damn people. And I'm thankful. To have them as friends and i'm very thankful to support them any way i can and i say that to say that you guys should support them too so most of the artists that came up please support them and if for any reason you're getting on this video late if you go to youtube and type in art meets life author spotlight or just type in lj bowens on youtube this video will pop up um once this whole show has um reached its entirety so we're going to go ahead and move to our next artist so um, our next artist is actually getting ready to come up. I met this guy a long time ago. I want to say a coffee scene, but I think I met him probably way before then. But the great thing about him is that he is not only a great author, he is a great musician. And I had the privilege of doing work with him at Fayetteville Tech um, Community College. Um, so, you know, just that being alone, him being a, a teacher and a scholar also just makes up has the perfect makeup to be a great human being and a great artist and thespian himself. Everybody, please put your hands together for the one and only Shane Wilson. Shane Wilson, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, everybody. Hey, I appreciate the intro. I appreciate that you called me a thespian, even though you've never seen me act. Hey, it don't uh, matter. But you know, I I was I was a thespian. I, I right. you are always a thespian if you are exactly. ever a thespian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but thank you, LJ. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm 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 blessed to be alive. I'm blessed to be around great friends right now. Um, my new year kicked off around great friends, and I'm with great friends now. They're great artists, so it's a it's a beautiful thing. And I and I and I didn't get a chance to mention um about hopefully you're gonna talk about. It. I think one of the books you did, you actually made it to like this type of stage play. But I'm not gonna give too much away. Right. I'm gonna be quiet because it's not my place to do that. Um, but give us the titles of the books that you are going to talk about today. So the, uh, the 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 novel that I'm actually going to spend the most time talking about is uh, a novel called The Smoke in His Eyes. This is uh, the second novel that I wrote. But you mentioned also the the stage play, uh, which is uh, The Boy Who Kissed the Rain. That's this guy. Uh, it started out as a short story. And as a thought experiment, I thought I would write a stage adaptation for that. Just you talk about like the academic stuff, right? And it, I just... I went to a play one day and I was like, I think, I think I could probably at least give it a shot. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I had this one story that uh, had done, you know, pretty well. It had won an award and things like that. And so I thought it, it was also very sort of, I, I want to say cinematic, but theatrical is probably the better word for it. Um, and I thought it, it lent itself to visual presentation. And uh, yeah, so I wrote that and it was staged. It was actually the last event that, I was able to participate in before the great shutdown of 2020 uh, when uh, Dever Thomas of Color of Fayetteville produced a staged reading of The Boy Who Kissed the Rain in downtown Fayetteville last, I think it was very early February when that when that went up. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so that was a cool experience. Don't yeah, don't 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 say like an award or something. Don't downplay the award, man. <laughs> the award is award. Don't do that. Hey, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I've written these books, and uh, the most money I've ever made at one time was off of that award. So, like, I, I can't, you know, you can't downplay it too much because it came with a little of the green. So, exactly. uh, <laughs> so uh, um, real quick, um, real quick question: with the title of the book that you're going to talk about tonight, how did you come up with that title? 
Oh, well, uh, so uh, The Smoke in His Eyes is uh, the second novel that I have written in this extended universe kind of world, right? Where um, the stories are, you got to think like Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? The stories are all connected to each other, but you don't have to see them all in order to understand it. You can watch them in any order and, and the story still kind of holds together. Um, so this novel, The Smoke in His Eyes, uh, is the second novel that I wrote. And as such, it was it was also sort of this, it was me trying to figure out why I felt like I should even be writing anything ever, right? Like, I think we all sort of go through that kind of experience. Who am I, right? What do I have to say that other people should listen to? And so uh, The Smoke in His Eyes is about uh, this guy, TJ, who uh, goes through his life trying to figure out why he wants to create, why he wants to be an artist. He's a musician. And uh, he, he has this compulsion to create music, but he doesn't understand why. And so the novel really explores the different oh, reasons. Right. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there, only because I want to get off the screen, because I feel like I don't want you to go give it to me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. No problem. So I'm going to get off the screen, and, uh, and the floor is yours. Thank you, man. Yeah, so TJ is a musician who has this compulsion to um, understand. Well, he has this compulsion to create and to share his art. And he doesn't understand it. And so the novel is really his journey to understand that. And the, I'm going to read a short scene here uh, from the middle of the novel where um, TJ meets another artist. She's a visual artist. Uh, she's a bartender. She's covered in tattoos, but she's a painter. And he uh, is just coming off stage. He was playing a, a, an open mic. All of us know that open mic life, but he was playing an open mic at this uh, bar in town where she's a bartender and he kind of bombed. And I feel like we also all know that life of, you know, bombing. Right. Uh, so he had a bad night there, but she uh, this conversation proves to be very important to his development as an artist. Um, he walks her home. It's a snowstorm, all of that stuff. So I'll just read a little bit of this and uh, and then we'll get back to LJ. Um, and whatever other shenanigans he has on the docket. So it starts uh, as they are approaching the other character. Her name is Muna, M-U-N-A, uh, as they approach her apartment building. Here we are, she said, and she punched a numeric code into a lock on the door. You know, you're coming up right. And then they were climbing stairs up into the fifth floor of her apartment building. Inside it was a loft, one big room with a bathroom attached near the back corner. Uh, there, was, there were art supplies and big paintings sitting up against several of the walls and stacks of old vinyl records. There was no TV and there was one small sofa in the middle of the room facing the window. Did you do this? TJ asked, walking over to one of the large canvases. Muna was removing her winter clothes and hanging them up in a closet by the front door. I did. He looked toward her. She was in a tank top and jeans, and he noticed how far the tattoos ran up her arms for the first time. She was, uh, she always had on long sleeves when he saw her, but here, with the skin of her arms exposed, he could see the intricate lines and images that populated her flesh. He turned back to the painting. There were figures there, but they were hard to make out. It was abstract, but the colors were bright. Do you like it? She asked. I think so, he said. That's an interesting answer. I'm not very good at art, he said. I, I don't get abstract stuff. That's no big deal, she said. Here. She took his hand and led him to the sofa. Let me show you something. She pulled out a sketch pad and handed it to him and told him to flip through it. Inside the sketch pad was filled with pages and pages of drawings that were of clear and specific things, not abstractions. There were dragons and other fantastic characters. There were portraits, there were landscapes. She said some people hate abstract art because they think that people make abstract art when they can't make other more traditional types of art. They're wrong most of the time, but Whatever. These are really good, he said, still flipping through the book. Isn't that interesting, she said, that you look at these drawings and you know they're good, 
But when you look at the abstract pieces and you don't get art, what makes these good? She indicated the book of drawings. The fact that they look like something that you've seen before. She paused and took his face in her hands, moving his gaze to the large painting against the wall. What makes that bad? Because it doesn't look like anything. I didn't say, shh, I know. But maybe abstract art is about something else. Maybe it's not about looking like it's supposed to look. Maybe it's about looking like it's supposed to feel. You make music. You should be able to appreciate that there are other ways to experience the world other than with your sight. But if we could see some of the things that we can only feel, what would that be like? What if you could see your music instead of just feel it or hear it? That's abstract and that's beautiful. Her face was very close to his and her hands had dropped from his face and fallen onto his leg. And your music is beautiful, she said. He didn't know what to say. She started again. Earlier tonight when Gil came up, you were saying something about your music. You seemed to be frustrated or angry or hurting. Your vibe is all messed up. She moved to the kitchen and poured him a whiskey over ice. You do drink this straight when you're not hiding it at the bar, right? He nodded. She poured herself a double shot of vodka and a gin and tonic. She was playing some version of catch up, but she couldn't catch up with TJ. Not on that night. Talk to me about your art, she said. I don't know, he said. She interrupted him again. Please, TJ. Everyone in my life that I'm closest to calls me Muna. I want you to be one of them. She looked long into his eyes and he could feel his heart pounding in his ears. She made him nervous, but a lot of women did. Now, she said, you were telling me about how you didn't know about your art. She smiled and leaned back in the corner of the sofa against the arm and drank her gin and tonic. I can't write. This confession snuck out of his mouth. He was used to hearing the words bounce around in his head whenever he was trying to write, but he wasn't accustomed to hearing them out loud. What do you mean? I sit down with paper and pen and guitar and I try to write every day, but everything that comes out is terrible. It's worse than what I played tonight. And he explained the way he used to write. And he told her about Leela's directions and how she pushed him in a positive way, but it ended up making him doubt his abilities. He said, I know I have enough talent and I know that I know enough to write good music, but I don't know how to unlock it. I don't know how to put it together in a way that sounds natural. I don't want people to feel like they are listening to a song. I want them to experience the song. He could have thanked Leela for this evolution in his craft, but he wasn't thinking about it in those terms quite yet. Exactly, Muna said. He had clearly said something by accident, and she must have read the expression on his face. You need to get out of your head, she started. Think about what you said. I know, no, no. When you sit down and try to write, you're thinking about what makes a good song, just like you did with the sketches in that book. A song is only good if it sounds like something you've heard before, but you know better than that. You want your audience to experience the song. You have to get out of your own way. You need to find something to write about instead of finding something to write. Scene. And that is, uh, that's where we're going to, that's where we're going to wrap things up there, LJ. No, that was awesome. <laughs> like, I was just sitting there like pictured, every, pictured everything. And like, I don't even know if, it was meant to happen or you were in the midst of trying to find a spot, but I think it was sometime at the beginning, you said something to like this pause there, but yeah. I feel like the pause was meant to be there just in the visualization of what you <laughs> Yeah. Were. Right. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was <laughs> accidental <laughs> because I, I don't know if that was like playing that I way. Was, I was starting to read out of the, out of the book. And then I was like, I pulled this up on the computer so I could like look a little bit more up, you know? So like I got, I had to switch it over and find the spot again, but yeah. Um, yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, ac happy accidents. Right. <laughs> Definitely. So even though I got it up on the screen, where can um, people look for this book and more of your projects at? Yeah. So uh, the easiest way to find me and uh, and the novels and the play and the short stories and the music got a new album coming out probably March um, is going to be called of all the things I've ever said. I mean this the most. Uh, and, uh, that comes out early March probably, but yeah, you can find all that stuff at shanewilsonauthor.com. You can also follow me on any of the socials at that Shane Wilson. 
All right. Appreciate you so much, Shane. Absolutely. And Thank you so I'm, much, LJ. I'm looking to do some more work with you this year. Guys. Yeah, absolutely, man. We got we got to get something together. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Like everybody, this is like this show is like I think this is a good a good cleansing show to like get all the negative energy that was going on in the world at that time, like to get it out of the way, and we embrace a moment of just hearing some good work, some good poets, um, some good writers, and just enjoy the moment. Like I've been inspired now to want to write more poems, um, try to work on me a novel, and travel. So, you know, I'm I'm all for all I'm all for all that. Give me all that goodness. So the next artist getting ready to come up, which is a beautiful thing because um we go from one Shane to another Shane. So this next artist is actually getting ready to come up. I had the privilege of seeing this artist um over the years blossom into one of the beasts of um North Carolina poetry, North Carolina literature, um, North Carolina art, you name it. She has done it. And another beautiful thing about this artist that um, I am very thankful to talk about is we did a lot of work this year in the nerd circuit. Like we got a chance to perform together for a library con and um, Fayetteville Comic Con. So to have her rock out, do do her work. And then just seeing everything she's been doing um, just in general over the year of 2020, she's been beasting even in the time of the pandemic. And I'm definitely thankful for all the work she's doing um, with the with the work, um, all stuff she's doing in the community as well. Please put your hands together for the second Shane of our show, Shane Maynard. What's going on, Shane? What's up, LJ? It's so good to see your beautiful face. <laughs> see your face too, no, with the dope mug. Show everybody the mug, show everybody the no. mug. <laughs> so like, we have done so much work together. I was like, LJ, you've seen all my coffee mugs by now. <laughs> I know, right? I feel bad. Like I should have had one, um, a special one, especially for you. Like um, I can't show you, but for I think my wife's birthday or just a gift for her, I got her a, a Friday the Thirteenth coffee mug, like the mask and everything. I have to send you a picture. <laughs> so you get you. Get you. <laughs> so you have a lot of projects that um, you was telling me about. Please explain to us the projects or, or project, I don't know how you want to do it, um, that you're going to talk about tonight. Yeah. So um, right now I'm building a seven week course for creatives so that they can be successful financially and like through cultivation of their craft. So I've been working on that. It will be released at the end of the month. And then I also have a time management uh, class for creatives that launches Monday and there's only like three seats left. So you want on that, get on that. Uh, but everything I do is geared towards creatives, poets, musicians, artists. So I'm a creative coach in that aspect. And I've been doing that for about four years now and I love it. And then I'm also going to be talking about one book in particular, but I have two um, divine disturbances that came out last year as well. So Definitely. Yeah. So um, Divine Disturbances, because um, I don't want to talk get until you talk about too much of the book, but how did you come up with that title? Oh, yeah, that's such a great question, uh, because that so the book is about my years with adrenaline disorder and adrenaline disorder is what happens when your body stays in fight or flight for too long. So it was it was really weird. There was all these parallels happening. Right. So my body was. Um, internally freaking out and um, starting to break down as well. I ended up in the hospital and um, I was deep into martyr syndrome and a bunch of other stuff, you know, um, just with this need to have to keep going, keep going, keep going, you know? And so that's happening internally for me. And then also in my life, there was like all these other things that were breaking down. My mother was in the hospital. She was dying. Uh, my relationship of three years ended. My cat died. Like it was just like one thing after another, right? Um, so there was all these disturbances happening within my body and in my life. And what it what happened is it made me realize the disturbances in other people because you know our perceptions are reflections of ourselves. So I would be standing in line and see somebody like kind of showing the ass you know, like yelling or popping off or something. And I would actually see it in a different way. I would see it as this like holy moment because that person, 
their needs aren't being met in that moment. And there's a need there. There, there's like, there's like a humanity that's being exposed and that those moments when we are, when we are lashing out, right? Those are actually moments for us to practice grace with one another and to connect. So those are like doorways, they're gifts for us to connect to each other. And I saw it that way because that's what I needed for myself. So all the poems in the book are about these divine disturbances where someone, I'm witnessing someone lose their ish you know, in public, or it's me losing my ish in public. So um, that's the basis of the book. And I also, um, I donate some of the proceeds as well to um, black owned businesses as well. And also I donate copies to- I, 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 I hate to stop you uh, because it's almost the same thing as Shane. <laughs> Cause I, I, I was trying to get y'all to say a little quick piece of so y'all can get to it, but it's fine. It's fine. What I'm gonna do is still talk about it. And I'm gonna just take myself off the screen and the floor is all yours, okay? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, long winded, y'all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I also donate copies to um, shelters and also I donate to some youth groups as well who might also have issues with um, their body being caught in fight or flight. So know that if you buy one of these books, um, it'll help donate more books to, to places. And also um, part of the proceeds will also go to support black owned businesses. So, cause that's important, you know, um, it's not just about like sharing or posting on Facebook, y'all, like how are we gonna support the community? How are we gonna move forward, all right? And like build this world that we need to build, right? So yeah, I'll, I'm gonna read a few poems for y'all. Um, and then I also, the, lastly, I wanna read a poem from my first book, Fallen Heroes of the Awful Waffle. And this was printed by Main Street Rag. Um, it was published by them. They do awesome books if you should check them out. Uh, yeah, so this was my first book and uh, that was a journey. That was a year of eating nothing but Waffle House and writing about the people I met at Waffle House, like all over the South. So <laughs> that's what this book is about. But I'm gonna start off with divine disturbances. So here we go. All right. This is called Huckleberry Finn. Beside the rail walk ale house, Buck walks up like a happy-go-lucky pup straight out of the brewery with his bag of goodies. I know his name because he told me. During our 20 minute spin of flapping jaws outside under stars faceted as jewels, Buck's a homeless white 45 year old man. Said he thought I was real young till I spoke my poem. I tell him, you don't look a day over 36 and he don't. Tells me how on a corner, people of color will help you out quicker than any rich white man in a fancy car. Says he pulls up weeds, cleans the neighborhood where he panhandles between odd jobs. Gives back however he can. How a white man won't even look at him. I think about the Big Dipper over our heads. How the riches get stuck in there. Buck sober tonight so far. Tells me about his whole life, how his mama and daddy died, his two sisters he stays with whenever he likes, but he don't. How he'd rather be out here sleeping under these jewels than ever be caged in a cubicle, breathing in some hot breath from a red-faced boss. I tell him when I lost both my parents, something switched for me too. Life's just too short not to do what you love. Buck speaks about life, freedom, and loss, about running crack rocks for a six pack till the dealer got shot. Buck shows me the black tracks in his arms that match the train tracks beside where we are. Shows me his right bicep and forearm, swollen twice its size, red as the venue light. Says he put the needle in wrong and it bit him like a python. It's infected. He can't cut this one open like last time. Tells me to touch it. So I do, cause we've done started to sew ourselves together in the story. Buck winces, says easy, honey. You feel that knot? Yeah, I gotta go to the ER. Probably tonight and tomorrow morning to detox. I'll be back in a few months. Tells me they'll ease him off the methadone so he can get off and stay off. It's time to stop. Buck shows me his left side next. Says, yeah, I'm a black snake junkie from hell, but well, 
The black river runs like a cross, a barefoot walk of Jesus down his blood. Inside the building, the band mama tried sings, Lord, oh Lord, have mercy on me. And I get this overwhelming urge to wash this man's feet, calloused with jewels. Buck never asks me for anything, not a dime, but I give him two cigarettes and a thank you for insight to his life and passing the time. He tries to pay me for the smokes, but Buck don't owe me a damn thing. I tell him, don't worry, get to the hospital, then come see me the first Wednesday. I'll be right here, we'll celebrate. It's time for me to go back in since I'm part of the show, but my heart is pulling me to buck and all I wanna do is follow him as he walks off a happy-go-lucky pup so we can keep talking about life, freedom, and loss. And that was for Buck. That was real dude I met outside of a venue in Salisbury and uh, y'all send a prayer up for Buck wherever he is. All right. Whew. This is called sudden fasting. My boyfriend asks if I want something to eat. As we pull into the cookout drive through and all I can think is of last year when I was starving myself running so hard. And Tyler's mom made homemade meatloaf out of love and y'all, it was so good. I wept when I ate because I finally understood what eating was, the give and the take, the exchange. But the thought of this conglomerate chemical patty, well, at the moment, I'd rather starve myself sick than eat this. But I refrain from the explanation and just say, nah, baby, I don't want anything. While the tears are welling up in my eyes like a flogged priest's backside, taking the shape of crucifixes. There's a stigmata stuck in my throat. I'm choking on the world. My palms were bleeding psalms against my face when I finally break through the tears to say, you know, if I were God, I wouldn't want to talk to us either. But even as I utter this, I know that it's ridiculous because I can feel his great fist coming down inside of me to grab me for the pen. So I say, nah, God, he's still talking to us all the time. We just forgot the language. Tonight I saw poets clack out ghosts between their teeth, become possessed by the connection between the living and the dead, the damned and the forgiven, and they're tied together in that order. I saw a woman crumble under her sold scale and what opportunity disguised itself as a door. I wanted to tell her, honey, you already won. See the competition, the stage is just a mind trick, but we, look at me, we are the magicians and the magic, it's real, it's inside of us. But I went back to big city to see some souls in celebration to find the flesh had already been rotten, poisoned by the slave cycle. I wanted to turn over tables, tell them this here ain't no waste of space. When you gather, you have potential, but you kill the outcome with an excuse to let loose. There's no progression. There's a lot of movement, but ain't nothing been moved. So here we are now at a gas station and ambulances are riding by executing their sirens and it sounds like cash registers. The drawer is all skull and bones. The dead suddenly appear more awake than we ever were. And I'm praying while he's pumping blood into our steel horse since all the flesh is rotten. And I'm trying to find a way to tell God in the world, I'm sorry. I've been watching my friends get picked off one by one and I've been out here in these woods lying to myself like a coward thinking if I just stay out here a little bit longer, I'll gain some sort of knowledge to turn the tides of our corruption. But y'all, the war, it's all around us and there ain't no going back to sleep once you wake up. God is speaking to me in all tongues and I can't feel anything but the sorrow and the sickness and the disintegration of continuous generations with the dead around me being risen. I can't feel anything but the stigmata bleeding into my stomach and God knows that I'm not hungry. Not for one more bite nor corpse morsel. It all tastes like killing in the name of. It all tastes like the salt from Sodom, the sins of our fathers, the raped leftovers of our mothers. And I'm trying to conjure up the spirit of my dead brother, Alito, and ask him, did he ever find an answer? And what he suggests we do to pull out of this system, I'm sitting here being eaten by the scream emitting from the earth while my boots are lacing themselves, or maybe it's him tying them up to go back to war. That was Sudden Stigmata. And that was basically about me having a panic attack, trying to figure out what to eat when everything in the damn world is corrupt. Um, and just the spiral of oh my God, 
corporations own everything and we are all pawns in everything. So that was a panic attack in the cookout drive through <laughs> and at a gas station uh, where I showed my ass in a very divine disturbance. Um, yes. So I'm going to do I'm going to do one out of Fallen Heroes and then we'll call it a day. Um, this one's one of my favorite experiences I had writing this book. There's only 10 copies of this book left, y'all. Um, uh, it, it was it was a beautiful experience. The one thing I want to say about this book before I read this poem is you don't understand that some somebody in the industry of like Waffle House, right? Those waitresses are actually saving people's lives. And you wouldn't know that unless you spent that much time at a Waffle House and actually observed what takes place in the wee hours of the morning all across this country. Like um, Keith Flynn had said that wa the Waffle House is like the station of the cross for Americana. And that is the truth. Um, so this was one of the beautiful moments I had um, writing this book. And it's called Holy Whores. Time isn't laid out tick for talk the way we build it to be. It's tangled all over itself. The past, the future, the present. The machine says it's 12 a.m. While a family of four Muslims lays out a blanket beside the dumpster, points their temple hands to Mecca and bows in the alleyway. The same alleyway I seen a hooker wash her mouth out with soda after business brought her another plate to warm the leftovers of her conviction. I am struck by holy lightning as the past kisses the present, a witness to the knotted fabric as the family praying on their knees eclipses hookers on their knees, both resembling prayer suddenly together at the same instant, overlapping in a God wink, like forgiveness, time washing through me like baptism. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, LJ. Woo! Awesome, awesome job as always. I was over here um, listening to the polls. I said like, the 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 stick by the poem. I said that the description you gave for that poem should be a title of a poem itself. <laughs> Try to find something to eat in the world that's too damn corrupt. That's the title <laughs> of the poem, and then just like go in like that should be the start of a whole another poem. But I digress. Um, <laughs> um, excellent job once again. Um, with everything you do, the uh, book Divine Disturbances, which everybody should go ahead and buy. I'm telling y'all that now, along with every other author you heard. But Divine Disturbances and all the other projects you got going on, who want to know more about your projects and ways to buy your book and other work, even though it's on the site right now, the video, um, mm -hmm. where can they um, find out more information about you or your store where they can buy your stuff? Yeah, definitely. If you go to my website, it's my name, shanemaynard.com. Um, if you go to the store, you can buy uh, the art, because I am a visual artist too. I have art for sale up there and I also have all my poetry merch. I have two books and two albums. And then also if on my homepage, if you scroll down and click on online courses, you can sign up for the time management class if you'd like to. It's called time mapping because I don't like the word management. We're going to take down the patriarchy as we're building this woman owned business. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead, babe. Look, snap your fingers. Yeah, my wife was snapping her fingers at the whole thing. So. We don't call it management. We call it mapping. Time mapping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Shane. Um, like I mentioned to some of the artists earlier, I'm definitely looking forward and God willing, we do some more work together again this year in 2021. Yes, sir. Thank you. And thank y'all for listening. Appreciate it. Take care. All right, guys. Um, before we get to our next people, because we have um, four authors left, I do want to let you guys know that tomorrow, if you are a big nerd, um, please tune in because we kick off the, and I'm happy to say this because I didn't know this show was going to end up becoming a, a, a show that's going to have a second season. So we're kicking off season two for Art to Heart. As you know, Art to Heart is kind of like a 
a I want to say a spinoff to Art Meets Life in a way that we only do like interviews. We don't have people performing. We just do interviews with guests of all types of mediums of the art, whether it be painters, voice actors, actors, novelists, dancers, you name it. We try to have full on interview, like an interview. And we have like a sit down conversation between artists. So I'm very blessed to have um, a woman who is phenomenally known as the OG voice of Ash Catcher for Pokemon, Miss Veronica Taylor will be our first guest kicking off season two of Art the Heart. And that will be tomorrow at 8 p.m. Please tune in. It's going to be a phenomenal show. It will be streamed here live on Facebook Live and on YouTube. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And um, because of that show um, and try to step it up, we're going to have a new intro video for that too. Um, I may premiere it at the end of this. We'll see. Um, but, you know, I'm excited for it. Go Fiverr. So <laughs> with that being said, we're going to bring up our next author. This this author, this writer is no stranger to the, the literary world at all. Um, known to be a phenomenal um, poet, known for being a phenomenal playwright, known for being a phenomenal slam coach. I think one of the things that people don't talk about much and, you know, I hate sometimes on social media, people post up some great things that get lost in time um, that you don't realize the type of writer that you you've come across or the type of person that's in your life as a writer so i know there was one um story that i could bring up i wasn't with them but i saw when he posted this um i think there was like a literary festival or a literary type of show or something of that nature and the next artist who is known for just being like being a spoken word artist um he got matched up against i think a known author and they had to come up with a story within like five minutes on the fly uh, for this like competition and it was like one of the dopest things i seen him put up that i was like wow so maybe we should start doing it maybe somebody else should do that one day um but that's just one of the one fun stories i know um about this person that came to light um with them and i could talk more about him but i'm gonna let him speak on himself um without further ado y'all know him y'all love him put your hands together for the one and only the sign ahanu what is going on sir Man, I'm I'm just out here trying to make it, man. I'm just out here trying to make it. You know I mean? <laughs> out here trying to make it, man. <laughs> so once again, thank you for um coming on to the show. Um, all the phenomenal work you do, it, it goes without saying. Because um, if anybody wants to know who the Sana Hanu is, you can always Google the name, and there'll be a million things that come up. I know of one book that you've done. I know numerous books you've done. I know one of your books I actually had the chance to talk about in Faye Observer years ago when we were doing an interview for Fayetteville Tastemakers. And I also know that you have a new book. If, and, if, and by all means, you can correct me when um, you start speaking. If you have not released it now, you have talked about it and you have done pre-orders for the book. So mm -hmm. tell us about um, the book or books you want to talk about tonight on the author spotlight. Yeah. So, um, the, the there's a series of books that I've been envisioning and working on that I call the Black Life series that just talk about and chronicle Black life. Um, the first one <clears throat> in the series is called Everything Worth Fighting For, an expression of being Black in America. That's every everything worth fighting for. That's actually on that side. That's actually the artwork for the cover of that book. Um, but the book that we just did um, pre-orders for and we'll be um, doing a release for later this month is called Shackled Freedom, Black Living in the Modern American South. And that is the new book. Um, you actually can find it on online retailers, Amazon, all those things. It's up. Um, and then the um, it's being published by Willow Brooks, which is uh, an award-winning um, division of Aquarius Press. Um, and it'll be up on their website and available all over by the end of the month um so i'm really excited and that's the book that i'll be sharing from now nice so that that title itself i mean i, I think it would seem like it's a gimme where people would think um that title came from just pretty much anything that's going on and it could be that but knowing the the intricate mind as the sign of hanu there's probably more context to that so what did that title for the book um how did that manifest like what came how did that title come up well, when I, the reason for Shackle Freedom is the fact that, you know, um, for all intents and purposes, we are supposedly free, but 
the one thing about being in the South is that we're shackled to a history that the rest of the country seems to want to ignore and forget about. And oftentimes that means they dismiss us. Um, so it's a little, it's one thing to be Southern, but it's definitely another thing to be Black and Southern. And so if I'm going to talk about Black living, then for me, it's not just talking about that, but it's also talking about everything that we are down here and all the beauty of us. So that's what the book does. It talks about everything that I can think of that has been significant in my Southern life and that I've seen in the Southern folks around me that are Black. Definitely love it, man. Well, I'm not going to hold up the time. Um, Mr. Desana Hanu. The stage, the floor is yours. All right. I think the most appropriate way to start <clears throat> and introduce the book is to start with the introduction. Um, and also, I uh, can't wait for people to get hold of this. Um, the forward, I had the pleasure of having the forward to the book re uh, written by the marvelous journalist and writer, Michael Harriet. Yeah. All right. I am Southern. I am Black. I am an artist. I walk in a rich, beautiful, and powerful tradition. This book is my contribution to that tradition. It is my way of honoring everyone who helped me understand what it means to be a Black Southern artist. It is a way of repaying the belief in me shown by so many people in my life. The South made me, raised me, and gave me my platform. From the cookouts to the church house, I have seen the impact of vivid storytelling, passion, and conviction. I have witnessed the power of a good word. I've shared space with some of the most amazing blessings. I have learned from some of the most endearing soothsayers. I carry all of that with me and I funneled it all into my art. I know some still see the black folks in the South as less than. I see the joy, the struggle, the hurt, the fight, the strength and the magic. I know that we are so much more than anyone wants to acknowledge. Down here we love we fight, we dream, and we won't let ourselves be defined in any way that ain't of us from us. We are determined down here. We are proud down here. We be full of life down here. As long as I have breath in my body and a pen in my hand, I will never let anyone forget that. So with that, I think the most appropriate way to start is to read <clears throat> this piece called Down Home. They act like the sun shine different down home like the dirt too dark for repentance, like civilized stopping the Mason Dixon. They say guilt dense as fog east of the Mississippi, say it show sound like selective amnesia around here. So you can still smell the ash in the air, plantations, crosses, hay, trash, pit cookers, stump holes, steels, churches, but don't we walk like resilience in spite of? Smell like belief in the up on high, laugh like cotton was tickling the field hollers out of us. Each house is a hymnal down here. Each penny colored cheek is a joyful noise, you know, the kind of noose is supposed to silence. Down here is a boot camp for the forgotten. Mud trudge, weeds pulled, dirt dominated. We know planting, tilling, picking, feeding, feasting. We know ain't no tomorrow better realized than by hard work and redemption. We know that backwoods ain't the opposite of progress. That dirt roads don't mean deserted. The hospitality ain't a subtle surrender down home. We know they see us as natural disaster. I say ain't we calm in the eye of a hurricane Ain't we the American dreams guilty conscience? Ain't we the best example of make something out of nothing to wade in the water and swing low? Ain't we a blues lick and a second line reverie? Ain't we a joyful noise on Sundays? Ain't we chitlin circuited genius from Gulf Coast to the Great Lakes? Ain't we spread on table? Ain't we the clothes on your back? Ain't we the yesterday you want to so desperately forget and the tomorrow you can't make without us? Ain't we magic? Ain't we here? Ain't we gonna be here? Ain't we? Ain't we life, love, joy, overcoming glory? Glory, hallelujah. Ain't we in an amen? Ain't we? Ain't we? Amen. <clears throat> this next piece is called Five on the Black Hand Side. And it's a series of, a series of five haikus um, in the spirit and in honor of Sonia Sanchez. <clears throat> One, daddy, when will they value black life? When it's sold on eBay. Two, oppression's greatest fear, a black queer woman with a plan and a bullhorn. Three, when Reagan dropped welfare clean, when, Re when Reagan dropped welfare queen, it also went pop and took over the airwaves. Four, I don't know the riches of the tombs of pharaohs, but I know that big glass bottle of chains sitting in the corner of my mama's bedroom. 
five. Big mama ain't never known no other love than full and whole and God. Next piece is called Gospel of John, <laughs> um, and it subtly addresses a lot of things, but particularly centered around um, this, uh, this whole ridiculousness, especially here in the good old North Carolina, uh, about monuments and statues. <clears throat> One southern midnight, I noticed a crow on the shoulder of a monument honoring a Confederate general in the middle of a park grown rich green and fertilized by black blood. Watched the shit on the shoulder of a drunk white man in layers of frayed cotton propping himself up against the statue. He is so drunk with guilt he does not notice what is on his shoulder. Southern hospitality and grandmama's kitchen table sermons lead me to ask if he is okay. He says he's better than me. I laugh at the irony. I tell him he needs to eat something to soak up the white tears too strong a proof for him to keep himself composed. I offer him my pancakes covered in mammy syrup in a blessing. He told me to go to hell. I'm not surprised at how he felt my loaves and fish were a blasphemy, how false idols, ritual, and spirited escape had robbed him of his ability to recognize truly the face of God. I left him there begging a false prophet for an exorcism knowing he will remember our exchange as healthy dialogue, knowing he will consider the passing of time as progress, knowing he will wake in the morning and call his hangover post-racial. And then the last piece I'll share before I am done here um, is um, I talk about that this, you know, this book covers a lot of different things um, and family and love is a part of it. Um, but I want to make sure, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's a representation of the whole of us um, and not just the struggle of us. And so um, I want to close with this poem. It's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Ain't no glory like lifted voices, crescendo like burning sage, riffs like whips and auction blocks, runs like late night through bayous, moans like lost days in classrooms, last days on street corners. Sundays spent praying for the blessed assurance you're going to see another sound sunrise and ain't that sound deep and guttural. Ain't it song? <clears throat> if there is one truth I know, ain't no heaven like a black woman's dinner table, ain't no hallelujah better than redemption songs, all charcoal and shotgun. Ain't no almanac for the notes you learn painful. No senses for the massive of that reverie. No recipe for the way melody molasses and butter make Jesus' harmony leavened. Don't it feed you like loaves and fish? Don't it sit on your chest like hung on cross? Won't it come back when bold or burdened by silence? And ain't it prettier than Easter service? We call holy random, spontaneous, but ain't it just right place, right time? Ain't that love as proud and specific as who made the stuffing and potato salad? Don't it smell like the pearly gates opened? Feel like liberation rang the doorbell? They say you can find our Lord and Savior on the right hand of God. And you can find that matriarchal choir on the left. Gossip and memory never sounded so glorious. Laughter made you believe tomorrow was possible. Smiles made you think hate was a boogeyman for another night. Ain't no glue like a black woman's belief. She say it's going to be okay, it be. She say it's in God's hands, it be. She say the food is served, it be, it be an altar and an anarchy. Ain't no glory but God's, but ain't no rule but theirs. It be a sanctuary and a sermon, a boot camp and a blessing. When you don't question the authority, you know when to fall in line and you take orders as they come. This battalion be their babies, no matter the age. This mill is a strategy we are thankful for, so very thankful. Ain't no better lesson in leadership than plate made. Ain't no better gratitude than plate clean. Ain't no better reminder than second serves. Here we learned that there was always more work to do. And didn't Moses and Aaron spend 40 days in the wilderness before making it to the promised land? Ain't it a black woman's magic to reduce it to only six days? What a miracle it is. The way they gather us like disciples and scripture us a family. Teach us that faith can move us forward. Whether blood or promise before pastor, whether adopted or still seeking admission. Family without works is a flat line blasphemy. That ain't what they made us for. Ain't no excuse a good enough amnesia. Ain't no trouble a strong enough divide the table. 
the affirmation that the best of what we are is a full meal. When that song stops, ain't ailment nothing but Judas, ain't crucifixion just a teary-eyed home going, ain't the three days after your last hope, don't them tears fall in rhythm to that song, don't you sing along without ever noticing how easily the notes come, ain't it the best gift you've ever been given to know what that hymn sounds like, what it feels like, to know what that ki kitchen is supposed to be like. There is one truth we know, ain't no heaven like a black woman's dinner table. You know, hallelujah is better than redemption songs, all charcoal and shotgun, all magic and miracle, all black and black woman, beautiful, blessed, and beloved. Thank y'all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Desad Ahanu. Oh, man. Um, that last poem, I think, the first time I got the chance to hear that, I believe it was intro versus when you went against blues and I'm listening to it, kicking the air. Like there's something in front of me and I'm looking at blues face while you was doing it. It's like one of the funniest things in the world, by the way, y'all should check that video out. Um, on all that poetry intro versus. So, <laughs> but even though I got it up on the screen, um, and I know you mentioned other outlets where people can look and pre-order the new book. Where can everybody get any of your other projects or want to know more about you and how to follow you? Where can they go? Yeah, so you can go to the website, thesanahanu.com. And um, when you go to the website, if you go up into the corner, there is a little store icon and it will take you to my store. You can order uh, the book that's before this, uh, everything we're fighting for. You can order um, a couple of the books, um, Freedom Papers and Innovator and it's where other merch will start to appear. And there's some other things. Um, there's some, you know, Bullsey Slam Team books, you know, which which LJ is also part of, uh, of one of the books that's published that's that's available there as well. So, um, yeah, you can find out everything on my website. Um, it'll actually be getting updated over the weekend. Um, and then, like I said, you can it, you can follow the link to my store and you'll find merch there. And then you can always search for me. Uh, I'm Desana Hanu. I'm the only one with that name. You can always find me anywhere on the Internet. It must be very good. Like every time I've ever seen you do a show like like a show like this or just any other show, just the the fact of knowing that you the only decide on how do you can search in. <laughs> and just, I know it feels good. I know it tickles you. I know, yeah. You got to admit it. You got to. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. So. If anybody ever finds out about one, let me know because because they didn't exist before now. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm being bitten. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much, Decide How Do. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. We're gonna keep this show going. Um. I'm I'm I, this I'm thankful that we were able to do this show. Um, we got three authors left, but I'm very thankful that we were able to do this show. It puts me in the mindset of I'm not going to say this is going to happen, but if God willing, um, maybe there's a chance if the world opens back up the way we want to, we can do this again and actually make this something big here in our area where we can get the authors to come down and rock out and um, you know show love and everything and y'all come out and show them love as well because i know stuff like this it's great to do it and um it's a beautiful thing guys so i, I appreciate all y'all and by all means if you love any other authors that you heard tonight and for any reason some of the authors that passed if you cannot remember where you can find their work please by all means once this video is done go to youtube go to facebook live search this video um because we will share it and then it's going to be um on youtube in general like it's, you'll be able to find it and look up these authors again and purchase their books support these authors because at the end of the day everybody went through something during the pandemic but artists and authors went through just as much as everybody else have so please support these authors please support these artists your next artist getting ready to come up is someone i'm very happy to bring up um i'm happy to bring up everybody this particular artist and author by by the way is one of my good friends um, had the honor of having her on our Pillars of Fayetteville showcase when we did our Southeast Regional North Carolina Poetry Festival this year. Um, one of the first members of the first, I can say one of the first, yeah, she was one of the first members of the first slam team to come out of Fayetteville, known as the Fayetteville Fire Slam Team when we went to Southern Fry back in 2010. Um, she's out doing great things, and she came out with a phenomenal book, and I'm glad she's here to talk about that book. Please put your hands together for the one, the only, Lady S. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Lady S, what's going on? Got the lip gloss popping and everything, and the light behind you, like a halo over your head and everything. What's going on, sis? 
Hey, what's going on? I'm chilling. Um, How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I have officially been all over the East Coast. I'm back home in Philadelphia, but I love you guys and I appreciate you. And if you do a show, I'll definitely travel and be there. Oh, definitely. Like I'm, I'm already like I'm like I'm plotting, but I'm trying not to plot too much because I know you know the guy. Got to make sure everything is with the guidelines. So, but enough about me and everything. You had a book that came out. Tell us about the name. Tell us about that book. Oh, uh, the first individual book that I had come out was All of Me, and the book that I recently put out is uh, Mixed Matters. And I had a great time doing this book. Uh, actually, uh, a Fayetteville artist did the cover work for me, Yogi with Two Eyes. Um, I had local, Yogi. And I had a local uh, publisher from Virginia, which is uh, Wilder Perspectives. So it was a lot of fun. I worked with a lot of great people. Um, I had a lot of self-realization. Um, and it is, it is the heart of anybody that knows me just uh, talking about controversial issues, getting it out there so people can discuss things. Um, I'd, I'd love to see it on somebody's coffee table, have a meaningful conversation about it. Yeah, because like um, the, and like I said, I've been asking everybody about the titles of their books because I know a lot of people have like so many, so many um, reasons why they come up with the titles of their books, and they because people think certain stuff when you see the title was surface level, but just seeing when your book came out and the co I remember the cover drop and then it said mixed matters like. It could be one definitely. It could be the thing you think about um, when you see mixed matters because you see the you see the face, you see the person that wrote it, so you think one thing. But um, just give us um, some of like how the title came to be. Um, the title came to be because I was looking at all the controversial issues in the world, and um, so many people, you know, asked me that that question, that age old question that I got since I was six: What are you? Um, and so I'm always having to, to defend me saying I'm black, you know, I'm a black woman. Um, and it in itself became a controversial issue. Just me saying I'm a black woman. Like, who are you to tell me who I am? So that's kind of how my title came about. And um, I have set, I have five chapters in the book and all are uh, different mixed matters, racial matters. Um, I have a chapter. Um, about church matters. Um, I, I go to church, but I can be that that hypocrite, right? That that points the finger <laughs> at the next So I I think all of these things are important, and for us to identify those uh, prejudice that we have within ourselves, and that's how I really came up with the title. I love it. Well, you know what? Um, I, I have done my part um, as far as for what we do here at the show. So I turn the floor over to you. The stage and the floor is all yours. Thanks. Uh, the first piece that I'm going to do is um, one that guys love and hate at the same time. It's called Run Boy. Look at his height. Look at his weight. Look at his thighs. Oh, what a prize. He sure is obedient. He sure is strong. Now give us a smile and put up your arm. He always listens to the owner. He never thinks about it twice. You can dress him up and take him to a party. He sure look nice. He's in the field, in the heat and the snow. Oh, look at him go. Run, boy, run. I'll trade you my best for the next two picks off the boat. I mean, the next two picks off the draft. I mean, well, you'll do the math. It's off season now. Look at him go. There's not a place he can hide that the cops don't know. Not a thing he can say that the media don't hear. Are you living in fear? Well, then you're having fun. Look at him go. Run, boy, run. He's gone 113 miles on the highway, running into trees. He's giving all his money to the vixens like it's a disease. One beat his wife, the other smoked weed. Lock him up during the off season indeed. The mentality of a man who never mentally matured, the mentality of a man that society still sees as a boy. Please don't publicize those who make it. We only want to see those who try and fake it. We don't want to see the house and car that he brought for his mama unless she's a crackhead. Then let's make a show of his life. It's time for that drama. He'll last, last 
three and a half seasons until his body breaks down the last three and a half seasons until they call him a clown. Let me get one more mile. Don't take him to trial. Why don't you run, boy, run. Run till your knees are no longer able to please. Run until your shoulder cracks and breaks. Run until the supermodels have taken all the money they can take. Run until you're right back in the same slum from which you came. You won't even know who to blame. We'll just say in the past few seasons he played a poor game. Run until the crowd boos when they hear your name. Now it's time for the devastation. Time to train the next generation. Do we start at age six? or four. Train them in the rain and don't forget to train the brain as they get bigger, taller, faster, stronger. Combine training will train the body and the mind. Put yourself up on that block. Stand there, boy, and be a rock. Let me measure your legs and feet and I'll put out a little tweet. You want to buy this one for sure. I mean, you want to pay this one a little more. He's the second generation. This boy's mama was a beast. Look here, pause, boys. This one's going to bring out the feast. Look at his height. Look at his weight. Look at his thighs. Oh, what a prize. Why don't you run, boy? Run. So um, that was Run, Boy, Run. Um, and uh, in what I see as the similarities between some of our um, sports, especially football, and slavery and uh you know there's a lot of controversial issues there white owners uh black players it's just so much stuff to look at um the next one the next poem um that i am going to read is from my chapter mixed faith and um it talks about uh a little bit of that that being a hypocrite it's called christ -like. If Christians are supposed to be like Christ, then why don't you fight? A disclaimer, I am a light and then a story. Young Mary walked unread, unwed, head down, no money with a frown, hopes of a young man's hand and a name of Yahshua, meaning one who was like God because God knows no one ever gave her favor. Now for those of you who are supposed to love your neighbor, why do you look at young girls with big bellies and nothing but a name, a name like Michael, Timothy, Jesus, meaning one who is like God, like God knows no one can ever love them? I'm not stressing. It's just the question. Now back to the story. A young man walked around the land doing everything lawmakers told him not to do. He rapped, I mean, he spoke about going against a capitalist system, walking with God. He was an equalist, had whores as followers, had a snitch in the mist, and eventually hung for it. Now, young men by the name of Yah, Ja, Ha, <laughs> Hassan, and Hakeem, <laughs> so funny but rarely seen. How mother's broken Hebrew is coming back on their backs. They bear the burden of serving their God, their streets, trying to find a way to eat. Young mothers still living in stables for houses with dogs having more rights than some. No reason to boast. Young men begin rapping about things society say don't talk about and doing things that people tell them don't do. And the people that say they are Christ-like tell them pull their pants up, submit to the system, put their heads down and pray. But if you are like Christ, then why don't you fight? Go against the system, say the hell with tradition, and do what you think is right. But from what I read, the one you claim to be like this man that most called Jesus was a light. So write, write to young Jesus who is in a cell tonight, nails in wrists, frist, checked, mouth and anal cavities, clarity, dead in a system before age 33, because God knows I never seen anyone more Christ-like than those who give their life for the fight. So that that is Christ like. And um, I'll do one more piece for you guys. The last piece that I'm going to do is um, is called uh, Face of America. And this here poem, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. This poem is dedicated to um, 
everybody that I've worked with, whether personally uh, or in my professions, um, that that we try to guide and manage because we're told that they have a mental illness. We're told where we label it as an illness. Um, so this is called we, they. We are systematic groups of confusion under the illusion that we are going somewhere. We are doing something. We make a difference. They give the appearance that they are disillusioned. We work to serve their needs. They work for no one. We speak in carefully edited sentences with formatted corrections. They speak in what Ever they feel like. Excuse my booty tang potty car. I am Snoop Doggy Dog, past that gin and juice counselor. We can't remember how we got to work. Robotic movements and turns, putting on pants in the dark, showing up at the same spot at the same time as yesterday, because that is what we did yesterday. They Pay attention in such great detail that they see the flower as it blooms. They see their own elements as the cells in their body reproduce. They ask why their DNA follows them. They dance in the rain. We call them insane. We buy garbage from end of paid children, stomping into their own ability to be part of our systems. We pay money for our jobs, from our jobs for the garbage, saying please and thank you, but still forget that we had eaten. They eat out the garbage from trash cans, never paying for anything, never saying please for something that they know is only for survival. They never forget that they have eaten because eaten, eating stops hunger. We show up at appointments for people that are not present. They don't show up for appointments if they are not presently in need. We start to a single drum beat keeping us in line. They dance to music of raves, blues, pop, Rock, mix, dips in substances. They are happy. We are oppressed. They stomp around half naked with a feathered hat and we scurry off to find placements, unable to see their inner supermodel. They are supermodels of the human race and we race just to sustain their existence. Thank you. Woo! Let it S, let it S, let it S from Philly, Philly, Philly. So, even though it is on our wonderful video down at the bottom, where can any where can everybody find your work at? Um, of course, uh, the mo most lucrative way for me is for you to get it straight from me. Whether you contact me uh, by phone, email, nothing nothing changes around here. Um, uh, my Facebook and Instagram. Um, yeah, of course. I don't know. We have a little reverb. Um, but of course, you can also get it directly from Amazon.com. Um, however, you get it, I appreciate it. Um, like I said, if you if you ever pick this up and talk about any issues, have a real conversation, then I don't care how you got it or how much I got from it. It served its purpose. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Lady S. And um, like you was talking about earlier, as soon as I can put something together where we got a lot of space and I feel everybody is safe, you will be one of the first people I call. I promise you. I love you, Lady S. That's my dog. That's my dog. Take care, Lady S. <laughs> All right. So we are down to our, our last two authors. Now, I have to prep. I have to make sure I say everything right about this next author that's getting ready to come up because this next author um, is a great example of a person that walks in his purpose. And if you don't know the story of Nurse Lamb, it's a lot of parts that come with like how Nurse Lamb came to be, as far as how I did it. So, as far as the idea, everybody knows. Um, 
Nats was doing it for a long time. I didn't like how Nats was doing it, so I came up with my own version of it. And it was a great thing. But when it comes to Comic-Cons, the person I'm about to get ready to bring up is the reason I started doing them at Comic-Cons, and he helped open the door for that. Um, this is one of my great friends. He does so much great work, not only for the Comic-Con circuit, but just for faith in general. Um, if you want to talk anything nerdy, this is a guy you can talk to. If you want to talk about anything dealing with the Bible and faith, this is a great guy to talk to because he has a plethora of knowledge in both. He is the owner and operator of Faith and Fandom. He is part of my panel. Like I always, every now and then I will mix up a panel, but when I could tell you like the diehard people that started up the Nerd Slam panel with me, it was my wife and it was this guy right here. Um, and I'm always thankful for him because he comes out with so much great material right when you need it. Um, without further ado, please put your hands together for the one and only Hector Mirai. Hector, what is going on, brother? What is going on? What is going on? Man, thanks for having me, dude. Bro, thank you for, I, I'm glad, like, I want to say thank you for making the time, because I know a lot of people would be like, well, I ain't doing nothing right now because of the pandemic, but, because <laughs> I know people have said that, but the, seriously, thank you for making the time to be here. Like, I, I always appreciate the time I get a chance to either A, have a show where I can get you on, or B, we find ourselves in a situation where we always get together and, you know, we do Nerd Slam stuff. So, like, it's like, it's always, man. It's, always a, it's always a blessing. Um, So... You you always have some dope books dropping. I I came I came and tell you like I I want to say you dropped one book last year and a book at the beginning of this year, but you probably dropped like three because you do you have so much content. <laughs> so um, just tell us about the projects you just dropped lately. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, one is uh, a travel journal. It can be the companion piece for your wife's, um, <laughs> but where hers is more planning. Uh, this is more of a reflective piece. This is called How You Get There. It's a, a journal for your journey. Um, you know, you talk about comic cons and stuff. I spent, uh, I spent a lot of time on the road when the world was normal. And this is a lot of questions that I'd end up asking myself like on the road or whatever, but, uh, it's just a lot of space for journaling. And I got a dope friend that does artwork to put like art of travel quotes every so many pages. And then, um, there's a lot of prompts. So like, just like a uh, one prompt is like questions that I'll leave you as a uh, one was Turn to the right page. My bad. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, where would you end up in life if you actually had the desires of your heart? Not just on a trip, but your whole life. Um, so there's questions like that. Um, what's the most memorable story you think other people tell about you? Um, just stuff like that is scattered all throughout it, along with a lot of other things. What's one trip you wish you had never taken? Um, and so there's... <laughs> There's places for you to like put receipts, uh, souvenirs, stuff like that for your travel, but like also places for you to sketch. But it's just something I wanted. I literally wanted this book to exist so I could use it. Mm -hmm. So I made that <laughs> just basically for me. So I'm selfish. It's um, funny. And I quick story real quick. Like I remember um, we came to when you did the 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 the, the lawn con, <laughs> which I love. And I remember when we were just talking about stuff we was going on. It was just, it was funny and ironic how we were talking about books or it was something we were talking about books or something. And both you and Monica both was like, well, like, what? Do you, I can't remember which one said it first. I'm like, I'm doing a travel journey. He's like, well, it's funny you mentioned that because I'm doing what this so was like. It's funny how that worked out, how both of y'all came out with travel journey. Like, it was, it's always been a beautiful thing. I mean, to cut you off, I just wanted to share that story. No, no, it's as awesome. dope. And, um, and uh, I'm still doing Faith and Fandom. So I dropped uh, Faith and Fandom seven, the final book until the next one. Um, and cause I can't take a serious title. Uh, it's the seventh volume of this. And just with that, um, I started a new thing. You mentioned when, before we got started that, uh, I launched a website, um, uh, I don't know, past week or two. Um, but what I'm doing is rather than waiting for the chapters to come out, like for the whole book collection, I'm putting out every chapter as I write it, where people can read it then and even putting out audio version of it. So I'm doing that like today I dropped one on uh, Hamilton, like George Washington from Hamilton and lessons on leadership. And, you know, it's like if you compare what's in that chapter, which is on the website to what's happening, like in the past week, <laughs> it's funny. Um, 
<laughs> like, because I, I literally thought about reading that. And I, I'm just like, no, I'm going to let that breathe. But um, <laughs> but it, it fits in there. So. So, all right. So what I'm going to do, um, because this is your time, I'm going to let you go ahead and rock out. The stage is yours. And um, I can't wait to hear what you're going to share, man, because I remember last time we've had a situation like this. You share something dealing with Moana, and that was like a beautiful thing. So, like every time I mention you, I always mention that. So, dude, I, that, Moana, that Moana moment at the mm-hmm. last off, that was dope. I enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> Floor is yours, brother. All right, man. Uh, so, I'm going to read a section out of this, uh, which is based on The Walking Dead, the comic book. Um, just to preface this, so I don't have to read the whole intro to the section. Um, the creator of The Walking Dead decided to end the comic book by surprise. Um, he put three fake issues that were coming out and then cut the comic book off on issue 193 and surprised the whole world. And I, there was a bit of frustration with me because I was mad at myself because I had collected all of The Walking Dead like issues one through 186. And then I quit reading the comic book like six months before it ended. So that's the preface. Here we go. Me giving up on a comic book about zombies really isn't a tragedy, but sometimes we get so exhausted and overwhelmed that we give up on the things that actually do matter. Sometimes hope seems like such a foreign concept and that giving up feels like the only viable option. Let me tell you this. Don't give up. Don't give up on your goals. Don't give up on your hopes, on your relationships, on God. And please hear me, don't give up on yourself. You may be in a place where you are so ready to just quit. Don't. I gave up too soon. I was so close to the end of the story, and I couldn't even see it. As Carl reads the story to his daughter, we find out that all Rick's struggles and trials were worth it. In the end, everything he went through eventually paid off. Society was healed. The world restored and peace and civilization were functioning realities. Once again, it was all because Rick didn't give up even when I wanted him to, but this is what scripture teaches us as well. But as for you, be strong and do not give up for your work will be rewarded. That's second Chronicles 15, seven. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest. If we do not give up, that's Galatians six, nine. The Galatians verse states that if we shouldn't grow weary in doing good, if you are doing good, don't give up. Side note, if you're doing evil, you can go ahead and give that up. One of the difficulties is that it, that one of the difficulties in this is that often we don't feel like we are doing good. Even though we may be doing amazing things, we aren't getting the affirmation or encouragement we need in the process. We can feel like no matter what we do, it doesn't matter. and We might as well give up. That's the hard part of living out your own story instead of observing others. You are always in the middle. You can't see the outcome or even the whole picture. But if you believed in what you were doing enough to start, keep going. If you believe you can stand before God with a clear heart, keep going. If you know what you are doing isn't something that goes against who he is and who he calls you to be, keep going. Rick died a seemingly senseless death in the end. He survived wars against the plague of the undead, only to get shot in some pretty some petty domestic stuff while sitting in bed. He never saw the full outcome of his efforts, but he believed in his vision and hope enough to endure the struggle in the end. It was worth it. Carl continues to read to his daughter about his father's vision. Rick Grimes had an idea. He knew that if we stayed together and we made friends instead of enemies, we could do anything, even remake the world. He made friends and lost friends, and he moved across the country. He met people he thought would be friends, but they turned out to be bad. He sometimes had to hurt bad people to protect his friends. Sometimes he was scared that he was becoming a bad person, but he never did. He even met bad people and turned them into friends. Rick traveled far and wide always bringing his friends with him, and they made him stronger. They made him safe, and he taught people how to make friends and use them to make them stronger and safer. The trials made people so angry, and some of them just wanted to fight, but Rick knew that this was wrong. He showed them how to be friends instead. The trials were dangerous times, and even Rick didn't survive them, but he was able to show us the way. When you read Carl's kid's book version of The Adventures of Rick Grimes, it seems so peaceful. It seems peaceful because Carl was reading it from a place of peace. It didn't seem peaceful to Rick because Rick was in the middle of the struggle. The struggle was worth it, 
but it's hard to see the peaceful outcome when you are knee deep in disappointment or the undead. Whatever you are going through now, you will be able to look back on one day and see the warm, fuzzy version of the hard times. Just don't give up. The above mentioned Galatians 6 time, Galatians 6 9 is such a powerful verse. We may often glance over it like a stitched pillow depth verse, but there is a truth and a promise in it. Depending on your translation of choice, it reads like this proper time, just the right time, in due season, in due time, when the time is right, the time will come. It is indicative that the right time is coming, but we can't predict or manufacture it. We can't schedule a time when things will work out. Our only responsibility, frankly, our only option is to keep doing the good we are called to do. Doing good doesn't expedite or fast track the outcome, but it is the conditional statement to everything working out in the right time. When we grow weary and give up, we effectively disqualify ourselves of the outcome of the good work we have done. It boils down to the question of, do you trust God enough to believe that the proper time is coming even when you can't see it? He wouldn't have warned us not to grow weary in doing good if he wasn't fully aware it was a natural occurrence. He instead asks us to trust him, to bring things to fruition, and to respond to our weariness with perseverance. Rick was constantly weary, but he pressed on. He didn't know when peace was coming, but he did the work believing the outcome. His due season came. I'm going to just stop there, but because it keeps going. But uh, yeah, man, that's uh, just a chunk. That's something I've been sitting well with me for a minute. So. Bruh. <laughs> every, every, time, every time you come through, man, you always have a word that I need to hear. I promise you. Thank you so much. And I appreciate the side note you left to the people that um, are not doing good. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Tremendous. That, that, that's actually in print. That wasn't just me talking. No, I know. I, can, I, I, can, I bet I can tell. <laughs> so even though it's up on the screen, where can everybody find your works and how can they support Hector Mariah of Faith and Fandom? Okay. Um, I did just launch a website, which is faithandfandom.org, and you can check that out there. Um, that's fresh and still getting birthed. Um, uh, you can also go to Amazon and search, um, just search my name or search Faith and Fandom. You'll pull up all that. I have seven books on there, plus a kid's edition, plus um, the travel journal and two books that are uh, not nerdy, but spiritual. Um, uh, and uh, one's called Flocked Up, Sheep Still Going Astray. And, I have uh, that one. <laughs> yeah, that one. And then uh, one's called 10 Things I Learned from Sucking at Student Ministry. And um, But uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do with the website, and one of the reasons I wanted to get it out there was because I'm not doing cons, like, you know, because they're not happening. Or if they are happening, they're really not safe um, in some capacities, because some people just don't care. Um but uh, one of the things I'm doing is I'm putting new chapters up on the website, but I'm also going back and putting every old chapter up. So right now, all the chapters for book six and book seven are on the website, and I'm going to keep backtracking and adding them there. So if you want to go there just to get content, go. It'll be there. Um, if you want to support, you can buy a book, or um, there's also a Patreon, uh, which is uh, patreon.com slash faith and fandom, and for just creating some extra stuff there as well. Nice. Thank you so much, brother. And man, I, thank you, man. I, I pray. Um, I don't see if we're having it sometime this soon, but hopefully close to the fall, maybe winter, we, we link up again and do some nerd slam stuff. Like I, I need to do one bad. I have so much, I have so many like tiebreaker questions. I need to like throw out. The I, I've gained so much new content that I need yeah. to like question like, people on. So I, I know we're we going to make it happen one way or the other, even if we got to try to find a way to make it a, a virtual thing and turn into a game show or something. That's it, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, dude. All right, everybody. I appreciate I appreciate everybody that's been tuning in. By all means, thank y'all so much for still staying in with us. Um, we are at our last author for the night. Um, and this this person is very important in, 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 in everything that he does in the arts and everything that he does with people because he is definitely 
a good friend and a good supporter of the arts. And one great thing about him is y'all heard me mention him earlier because this is also one of the people that when this idea came to be the first time around, um, he was um, part of that 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 triangle that brought this together. So there was me, there was Law Bullock, and there was this awesome author right here. Ladies and gentlemen, your last author for the night, showcasing himself, the one and only Spearwolf. What is going on? What is going on? What is going on? What's up, LJ? What's up, man? How you holding up? Brother, you doing all right? I see you got the hat on, man. So yeah, it'll, it's also a little different than the last one because the last one kind of gave you a shock. Oh, you know what? I'm glad you did it because if you would have wore that hat, especially after this, what happened this week, people would have probably been looking at you. They're not looking at the hat and see what it really is. And it, you know, I I love the hat you have on today. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, the hat actually came when we were downtown one day. Uh, I think about two years ago. Oh um, yeah, definitely. It was just one of those I kind of liked it and just plucked it up and getting around to actually wearing it now got you i like it i like it so um you have an awesome book in your hand that i'm i i know about but maybe the world don't know about so tell us about what book you're going to talk to us about tonight well um back in 2016 um this kind of got a couple years on it uh right before southern fried in greensboro uh favorite person one of his favorite people in the community yogi with two eyes helped me put together a book and thanks to her help it came to fruition and uh, it's kind of a, a little just some short stuff that i've done it's not my full length pieces um that is something i'm gonna have to end up coming back and redoing a uh, another edition of to get it out again okay but 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 um the book out of the woods like what made you come up with that title for that book um well Cause it's like it's like it's layered it's see like it's layers because like a lot of stuff was going on during that time when you was like doing poetry yeah um uh, well i mean actually you know coming out of who i was into who I became at that time had a lot to do with it, but it even applies now with, with the way 2020 has been coming out of it and trying to, trying to get to where I, you know, need to be. Uh, so it kind of applies now. I love it, man. Well, I'm, I'm not going to hold you up, brother. I'm going to do like I've been doing it disappearing, but the floor is now yours. All right. Thank you, brother. Uh, I've got, that's, the chat book um i've got two pieces that i'm going to do out of them as i said they're short they're not full length ones um but they you know they kind of apply the first one will be more about doing the art and the second one will be kind of about some events recent even though this 2016 when it was done um it still applies so let me go with the first one here. It's called Poet. I am not just a writer of poetry. I am a poet. I feel the raw emotions hiding in each word scrawled across the page. I feel the ink flowing from my veins to the end of a pen and bleeding into every word inked. I don't just write poems. I live them. My flesh, the page, my heart and soul, the feelings and words, my and my every drop of blood, the ink flowing upon the sheet. That was the first one. And the second one, uh, of course, as I said, that was called Poet. And the second one is, what does someone's race, religious preferences, sexual orientations, gender preferences have to do with you minus the ability for you to hate when life leaves you teetering on edges, remember God has a safety net. When a child sees another child, they laugh and play without judgment, without care. Can we all be children again? And, you know, that's the one thing, you know, one of the biggest things is getting the unity of, 
of everybody. And the only way to do that is put put aside the differences that we think we see, that we've learned to see, and just, like I said, be children again, you know, just learn to live. Um, that's something that's definitely a, a plus with what's been going on. And that's going to be it tonight. Woo! Spirit Wolf. Spirit Wolf. The man, the myth, the legend. Like, I'm very appreciative of everything you are, man, and everything that you do. And um, the fact that through everything that's happened last year, because like I said, like last year was worse for, like terrible for a lot of people. Um, I'm not going to get to your story, but um, you going through so much you went through last year, but you you always you found you always found a way to stay strong through it all, even when things were seeming like it was very heavy. You still try to find you still find ways to smile. You still find ways to push forward. You still find ways to to let the to let the enemy know you ain't defeated. You gonna persevere through, and I appreciate you for that. Uh, real quick, brother, uh, where can everybody buy out of the woods? Uh, it's on magcloud.com and uh, keep looking. Uh, you know, if you if you follow my page, keep looking. There'll be some new stuff probably coming out within this next year. Uh, sh- some of them be shorter uh, time span than a year, but um, I've got some other ideas in mind I'm going to be pushing for. And as far as you know. 2020 um you know it's been it's definitely it's been a year uh for a lot of people uh you know a lot of misunderstanding or not understanding what life was and for me it just kind of it it turned on on the axis and made me have to sit here and realize what life really means and it's the friends and people you associate with um, and the ones that reach out and help you, uh, definitely, no matter what you're doing, reach out to people and, and you know, put, you know, put who you are, your pride and all that aside. If you need help, definitely, definitely put it out there. Uh, you know, someone, you know, if, if they, if, if they really are true friends and true people and who they are. They're going to reach out and help you. And uh, the last few months, I have definitely seen that. And it's been something I've had to learn, you know, to, to overlook my pride to be able to learn to live again. Yeah, people, I'm putting up all the comments that people um, are leaving up, man. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah, you... You, you know you got a friend in me. You know you got a friend in some folks in the community. That goes without saying, brother. I love you. Thank you so much for um, being on here. And I want to put this out there real quick to everybody. Um, Spirit Wolf also has another book uh, out called Wolf Bites um, that he was going to share from. Unfortunately, yep, show it, please. So the site, the book is through lulu.com. Um, we could... We weren't able to put the book link up because for some reason the book is not up there. Um, but um, I will say within the next few weeks, he will have that fixed and we will make sure that he is sharing that link on his social media so y'all can buy a copy of that awesome book. Uh, once again, thank you, Spirit Wolf, so much, brother. I hope you thank enjoyed you. the rest of your night. Night. <laughs> is that knife? <laughs> All right, y'all. So thank y'all for everyone that tuned in to this year's um kickoff show of art meets life so february we will be kicking back off um art meets life now i do i forgot to get a chance to do this because it was so much going on i want to give a shout out to the sweet palette because the sweet palette is our home venue as to where we do our live show of art meets life so at the current moment um art meets life at this moment still will be a virtual show once everything is clear as far as like um cdc guidelines dealing with the pandemic then we will start slowly but surely transitioning back to being a live show here in fayetteville north carolina 
But for right now, we are going to keep this um, show going and it will still be a virtual show. So we will be starting back up the open mics, putting the shows out a little bit earlier so that way people can get on the open mic. Um, features, we will start lining back up features um, starting next month. And I just want everybody to know that as far as what we're doing here in Favor, North Carolina, as far as what we can do, um, this is what we're going to do. Uh, if I have the platform in order, whether it be virtual or physical, to make these things happen, I will do my best to make these happen because I feel like all artists need to be heard and I feel like all artists um, need that platform. So if it got to be virtual for the time being, then we're going to keep it virtual for the time being. I'm very appreciative, appreciative of all of you that keep supporting these events that we do, uh, especially with Poetry Emotion LLC, because we try to do our best to make sure we are bringing these events even in this stratosphere because we don't know what's going to happen within the next few weeks um you know it could go away soon we will hope it will go away soon so we can get back to some type of normalcy um that may not be the case but we will still make sure that we have something going for everyone so i want to thank all of the authors that did tune in and i mean all the authors that did share their work law bullock shane maynard shane wilson hector mirai dasana hanu ed owens monica haynes bowens and nick corman and Lady S, and also, um, even though they couldn't make it, Ebony Payne English and Val Juan Blackman, please, by all means, look back at this video, go to all the sites that are listed, support these authors, buy a book, buy several books, support these authors, because they are fantastic artists, and they are definitely dope. Um, type the author name, title, and the search for books on lulu.com. Yes, you can do that for some of the authors. Um, definitely do that for them. Um, and we're not like saying we're appreciative of all you guys. Um, yeah, I love you too, Shane. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> I appreciate all y'all. So, on that note, before we end this wonderful show, I am going to, you know, I guess I'll go ahead and do it for y'all, even though y'all see it tomorrow. I'm not, yeah, you'll see it tomorrow. I'm going to show y'all the new um intro video to Art to Heart, and you know, maybe I'll do one for Art Meets Life eventually. But I guess I will bless y'all with the the new intro to Art the Heart since we never really had an intro. So we're, we gave it an intro. So remember, tune in tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the one and only Veronica Taylor, a.k.a. OG Ash Catchem from Pokemon. Please tune in. Please ask questions on the live show because um, we will let your questions get answered as many as we can within that time frame we're on there. So I love y'all. Peace. And always remain be safe, be well. And always remember purpose over popularity.